The football season is here, NDSU. We're live up on campus. It's Bison Media Day, a full two hours to get you ready for the upcoming football season. Hot Mike starts right now. Hot Mike with Dom Izzo. Really? Really, Dom? No. I like what Dom's doing. Okay. Dom is a. Jeez, come on, Dom. What do you think I am, a magician? Yeah, I'm fired up, Dom. What else could I say? Absolutely. I was great to get on the field, and then Dom came up to me, and I'm trying to walk away from me. I just wanted to enjoy myself out there. Hot mic. Great job. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of intelligent question about something. Is a coach Dom Izzo, WDAY in Fargo, North Dakota. Can you give me a layup or something? Hot mic. Hot mic. That program is second to none. On the networks of WDAY. You know, if it's not about sports, I find it very hard to concentrate. Here's Dom Izzo. Dom Izzo. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Thursday morning edition of Hot Mike on WDAY Extra, KSFL. Hello, Sioux Falls and Inforum.com on this Thursday morning. Tradition continues. It's Bison Media Day, and Hot Mike is live on location to get you ready. Four weeks from today, we will be in Boulder, Colorado, to get ready for the 2024 season opener as North Dakota State will take on the University of Colorado. we got a jam-packed show including right off the hop with the biggest of guests to start. Oh, come on now. The pride of partial North Dakota, Mr. Randy Hedberg. Great to see you. We've done this annually for, I can't even, I don't want to date you now. Is it uh, year 11? Let's not talk about years <laughs> and all that stuff or ages or anything that way. I, I'm with you there. Okay. Thanks for making time for us. I uh, appreciate it. Happy New Year. You're a few days into this, but uh just the excitement. I, may, I say that four weeks away. What goes through your mind when I say that? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. You know, from my perspective, uh, I don't really look uh, four weeks down the road. You know, we just look to the next, next day, day, the day, <laughs> the day ahead, and, and go from there because practice is so important to us. And that's what we try to, you know, in, in implement in our players. You know, just, hey, take each practice. Don't look down the road too far and that's kind of where uh, we are as coaches also. It's a little different vibe, Randy, with the opener being an FBS opponent. It's Deion mm -hmm. Sanders. It's yeah. Colorado. Do you feel that, even with the coaching staff, about what the anticipation for the first game? Yeah, I think I think as we get closer, Dom, I think, you know, those things will – probably uh, impact us a little bit more, you know, in our meetings and all that yeah. stuff when we start working totally on Colorado. Because uh, right now we're just going against the defense and trying to implement our offense and go from there. And, and that's, uh, that's always a struggle because, you know, we feel – very strongly that our defense is one of the better ones we'll face, you know, across the season, during the season. And uh, that's, I think, the plan for this year also. Well, what was the summer like? Did you have a summer now with, with the way the well, schedule's compacted? It, it, were you able to take some time well, off? Well, you know, it's it's really kind of changed a lot, Dom, through the years. Uh, you know, this year the, the recruiting was sped up so fat, yep. you know, much faster. Uh, Coach Polisek made a lot of offers. We made a lot of offers early earlier than we have in the past since I've been a bison yeah. coach and and I and I like that I, I really did you know we we had a lot of guys on campus that we'd offered and so when it got to June you know the the first part of June you're into you know doing camps Camp off season. campus yeah. yep. and then you do our camps and by the time our camps rolled around in mid June most of our guys had been committed yeah. and uh, then we did official visits in June which we've never done before and uh and so that uh, that was uh, sped up a little bit, but uh, I really like it. I think it's helped us a lot. And uh, so we got a month of July, and <laughs> you start practicing in July. So it's really uh, it's been fast to have thirty some odd commitments already in house. And I know you got to keep them between now and December. But does that not necessarily alleviate? the other pressures of that but how does that change your mentality about getting ready for the season now well it really helps you know because you can really work on um, you know whether 26 or 27s that you yep, you're looking right. at down the road you know <laughs> but uh but i do think it's helped us as far as getting ready to go uh for the season and not have to worry about that but but we still have to recruit those guys and because yep. you know, they're getting they're getting contacted by <laughs> by opposition schools, so we're going to have to be able to be on top so of that. Just because there's a verbal commitment doesn't mean anything, right? Correct, I mean, correct, there, there's correct. absolutely nothing well, done there. Uh, yeah, I know for a fact that, you know, there's there's a lot of programs across the country, some that play at a higher level than us, that look at our commitment yep. list and work off of it if they lose somebody. So <laughs> that I know that's happening. So Nature of the beast there. Let's talk about your 2024 offense. Everyone will want to talk quarterbacks, which I want to in a second. Is there a area of offense you're keeping an eye on early on in fall camp 
Well, yeah, I think our interior three, you know, I mean, as far as uh, offensive line-wise, you know, guards, the both guards in the center. Uh, I feel we have very capable uh, players at those spots. Uh, it's just, you know, getting through the mix and finding out who uh, can mesh with those tackles and all. And I think that's the thing because you, you really got Gray and Gray Zabel and, and – uh, Mason Miller, uh, Mason Miller yeah. you know, at the other tackle. They've played a lot of football for us, and and uh, so we'll see how they go. And they have to get better, and they know that, and they work at it and, uh, and all with it. I'm really encouraged by our tight ends. You know, I really think we have a good group of tight ends and we'll be good in that respect. Uh, so I think at the line of scrimmage, those interior spots are the most important. We've heard a lot about Bo Johnson, Jack Lewinsky, Griffin Empey. Those were guys that were highly touted. Nate Schneckloth in there mm-hmm. as well. It, the challenges of a redshirt freshman of learning the Bison offense, what is it in your opinion? Well, here, here's the thing that happens so much. When we practice against our defense, our defense moves a lot at the line of scrimmage, right. you know, whether they're twisting or, or slanting, whatever they're doing, and just working interior games between the DTs. So that's really hard for a young linemen, yeah. you know, because they're seeing so much in three days of practice. And, uh, you know, so that, that – doesn't give them a real fair assessment because of all that movement our defense does but that's how we play that's how our defense plays and they've been successful with it so i think it'll get easier as as it goes on with the, for those guys and as we start preparing in a game would you say you'd like to have as as a quarterback's coach to have a an idea of what the old line's going to look like like 10 days out two weeks out is that what in your mind well, what you feel I, good about you know i think it'll be a couple weeks dom you know okay. and, and and i think I think our guys would feel comfortable with that, our quarterbacks do, you know. Because, yeah. you know, a little bit different this year in that our quarterbacks are doing more in the protection game and all. So, uh, pass protection game, uh, you know, with IDs and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, they have to be able to communicate that to the center. You have another four year starter quarterback. You might be the most, you know, blessed QB <laughs> coach in the country to have two well. separate times that you've had a four year starter quarterback, first with Easton Stick and now with Cam Miller. How much is unspoken between you two that you know he knows what you want to go and he and you know what he wants? Well, you know, that's interesting. You know, I, like I've told Cam, you know, we talked all, all summer about this and last spring. You know, I'm here for him, you know, and, and I want to give him as much support as he needs. Um, and that holds true for Cole, uh, Peyton, and Nathan Hayes and Trey Drake also. But with Cam, I've had more of an experience with him just because of the years that he's been here. Um, in, in the many reps he's taken, you know, but uh, he's he understands uh, a lot of what we're doing. I mean, he's got a great understanding of what we're trying to do. And the thing that he does so well is he processes quickly. And, you know, that was a trait that, you know, our previous quarterbacks yep. have had also processing quickly at the, at the LOS because they don't get a lot of time. You know, we're trying to get – they get up there at 10 seconds. They, I mean, You're right? Yeah, they got to do a lot of stuff within that uh, time frame. What's the biggest area of growth he's shown you, even from this time last year to now for Cam? I, I think um, just understanding protections and who's going to be the unblocked guy um, if we do have an unblocked guy within, within a pressure, within a scheme. Um, and I think that's really important for a quarterback. Uh, our quarterbacks have to know, you know, we're going to protect these six or these seven. Uh, that eighth guy might, is going to be yours. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to be able to handle that and how you're going to handle it and uh, work away from it or throw hot off of it, whatever it is. You know, so those are – I think he's gotten a lot better with that. I would argue from Southern Illinois to the Montana game was maybe the best stretch of football he's played as a Bison. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, that, you know, I didn't look at it that way, Dom, you know what I mean? Um, I guess the know, last five, six games. Yeah, that year. could be, you know, he's, he's gotten a lot more confident that way, you know, and, and, um, yeah, he's gotten a lot better. I think this past season was a really good season for him. He's going to compete. Uh, that's one thing that Cam does is he's uh, very competitive and, and I think he'll compete his butt off during the, the 24 season. Now, don't get mad at me, but I asked you about your other quarterback, because there's lots of talk. The head coach has told me potentially he's going to be playing other positions. I know he's a quarterback, but the athleticism <laughs> of Cole Payton just oozes out of him. He's running past me yesterday, and it's like a deer. So how how much? That's you, a big deer. You, I know there's that. no doubt yeah. about it, but what do yeah. you see that out there? I mean, it's got to be tantalizing for you. Okay, we can use him in other spots. Yeah, I, you know, we, he will. We will. You know, we'll have different packages for him. Uh, 
And like I stated to you uh, a while back in, in the frustration, uh, he's a quarterback. I think that was my exact terms. <laughs> that was exactly terms. text. Yes, uh, it was. <laughs> with a number of exclamation points at the end of that, right? <laughs> Correct. I have yeah. it in my phone. Oh, okay, yes. okay. Uh, but he's a quarterback, and he's going to be uh, that guy. You know, you know, it's kind of looking back on it, you know, we anticipated Cam being finished by Correct. this time, you yep. know, and he got an extra COVID year. And Cam, uh, Cole was going to be our guy for at least two, two. years. And uh, now it's going to come, you know, possibly one, and we'll see. But, you know, the quarterbacks know that only one guy can play. Yep. And uh, we're very fortunate, you know, that our guys have stayed with us and hung in there. And uh, we've got a good group. But Cole Payton is uh, an exceptional talent. He's he's different, you know. I mean, he's 230-some pounds and 6% body fat. I mean, he's he's uh, he's wrapped up pretty tight. I saw a couple throws as well. And you've always told me he can throw it. He can throw it. You did that more with him mm-hmm. last season. Where have you seen him take further strides throwing the football? Oh, well, I think he has a better handle on uh, not guessing, you know, in coverage-wise. I think those are things that he's gotten better at. He's learning uh, a little bit more from a coverage standpoint and protection. Um, and, and he really spends a lot of time with it. It's important to Cole. And uh, and I think he's a heck of a competitor and all. And uh, he'll get that opportunity. You'll see him out there. You'll see him playing. And he'll uh, he'll have some and great opportunities to carry the ball and also throw the ball. With Tim being an offensive mind as well, how much you've only worked as head coaches with defensive mindset. How much has that changed well, since Tim's been hired? That's really yeah, that that's interesting you bring that up and obviously that's that's one thing, you know, with with T P he's he's an offensive I worked with T P for three right. years, you know, back back uh, when we first started here with the Bison and also um, yeah, he sits in all our meetings. You know, Chris and, and, and Matt didn't sit in a lot of offensive meetings. They were primarily with the defensive guys, uh, coaches, I'm saying. And uh, uh, But they both, both Chris and Matt, really, you know, impact our quarterbacks because they could give the quarterbacks, a, you know, kind of some – some tips and reminders a little bit on what defenses yeah. are trying to do, yep. you know, but, but TP is, you know, and we're trying to implement, we've got some of TP's, um, you know, concepts that we put into our offense, but the offense is what we've been doing in the past from a terminology standpoint. And there's been some tweaks uh, made to it. And TP has his hands in, uh, in a lot of that. Still as energized as you remember him from 10 years ago. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It hasn't changed that much. Not at all. <laughs> No, he, uh, you know, I I was at an event here a couple of weeks ago uh, out in Western North Dakota for the Bison, and and uh, I, I just said TP uh, is the type of guy that brings a lot of energy, a lot of fire. Um, the one thing he probably doesn't have a lot is patience. Uh, he's he's not a real patient dude, but uh, but he does bring some uh, some excitement and some uh, emotion to our football team. Give me a couple guys that maybe Bison fans don't know yet, younger guys, or maybe transfers in that we may know by the time fall camp is over. Anybody come to mind? Well, the one, you know, that I'm really, really excited and happy for and and, and really like his progress is Bryce Lance. Mm-hmm. You know, he hasn't had a lot of time over the last couple of years, but uh, he, he's going to be a really good football player. He's He's – maturing and he's growing it's just like you know his his older brother you know trey trey you know he he got better and better you yeah. know and and bryce is that way you know i mean he's he's tough and he's physical and he's uh, huge yeah, it seems he's like bigger. he's been grown since yeah. he got here oh yeah yeah, yeah. It, you know a lot of lot like christian watson in that respect That's you know scary. when christian <laughs> came in uh, i'm not comparing him yeah, to christian yeah, yeah. by any means but i'm just saying christian you know got bigger taller and and, and got obviously, better. yeah, and yeah, and he he got better. Yep. He he was a late bloomer like that, and I think Bryce is that way. You know, another guy on the offensive side. You know, I really like um, O line wise. I really like two young guys, uh, Jack Lewinsky, yep. who you mentioned yep. earlier, and Griffin Empey. I think those two guys are going to be really, really good yep. football players for us. Um, and then and then uh, Brady Wavernick, who is a, a second year freshman running back. I, I really think I really like Brady because he comes to work and he works hard and and I think he's a good protector which from a quarterback standpoint I really like that in the backside but (laughs) but uh in the backfield I should say but but he's one that I think is really going to be a good one I got to ask you from your NFL experience the preseason starts tonight the Vikings as you know drafted a rookie quarterback it's so different now where high profile rookies are thrown into the mix much like you were thrown in yeah, you know, how do you yeah. make it that of the NFL strat? You know that Carson started right away. Trey Lance had that opportunity. 
what, what is that a does it depend on the team to have success or not for a rookie QB like that? Well, that's a really good question. You know, my you know when I was a rookie, I, I was I didn't have that background that these guys have. You know, coming out of college, you know, from a small school. So when I was thrown in there, you know, we were just a, a new football right. team. You know, and, and second it was, year, right? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, we're playing. Yeah. You know, some guys that were kind of rejects from other teams because of expansion. You know, but. I was a draft pick yes. at least, you know, but there were some guys that were plucked off other teams other because of the raw, yep. you know, expansion deal. So I, I'd like to see quarterbacks sit, you know, when they come into the league and learn behind somebody. And I hope that's what the Vikings will do with yeah. McCarthy. I, I think he's a good player. Have you player. watched any of his tape of JJ? Uh, just, you know, you know, watching TV yeah. games, you know, that sort it of thing. What stands out to you about him? Well, I think he's athletic. Uh, I think he's competitive. Um, you know, he's a little quirky. You know, Easton, Easton's telling me as head coach out there at the Chargers, a little quirky. I think he probably yeah. he doesn't fall very far from the tree <laughs> on that one, you know, with his college coach, you know. But, uh, yeah. But, anyway, um, I think they're both uh, – but I, I do think they need to hold back some yeah. rookies, you know. I, th- I think it's really difficult. I had Easton on the show when he was back here for his QB camp. I asked him about what Coach Harbaugh was like. He said, oh, that's a – it's a different experience, yeah. but they really haven't – he's enjoyed it so far. Well, I think Harbaugh is a player's coach, yeah. you know what I mean? I think the players love him, and I think he, – he sits on an, in all the quarterback meetings. Right, so he told me that. He's in there all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, that's interesting, you know. So, But it, it, it'll be a really good experience for, for Easton, you know, because that's a, a new regime coming in there. How pleased were you? you to finally see him get a chance to, to play. I know it came at the expense of Herbert, but that's what you mentioned all the time. Yeah, next yeah. backup quarterback yeah. is next away. How did you feel like he, he played when he got in last year? Well, week? I thought he did a really nice job. You know, they had the one debacle in the, on national TV. Yeah, you know, game, yeah. But was was that a Thursday, Thursday night game? Thursday night game, yeah. 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 Yep. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't very good. But uh, but I don't think that was a whole put on Easton no. a little bit. You know, but it's a tribute. They they. Brought him back on a one-year yeah. deal, you know, so they must have saw something in him. And uh, I think a lot of that goes, you know, for a guy like Easton, how he how he gets along with Justin Herbert, the starter, who's a pretty good yeah, He's all right. He's good. You know, I mean, Justin's going to give a uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on who he brings who's in, whose back yeah. is, yeah. you know, backup is. And, and I'm sure he gave a thumbs up to get Easton back in there because, you know, they got a good working relationship. I know you got a bunch of uh, interviews today. I appreciate you being – you're the first one here. So well, this is the most important one yeah, right is. here. <laughs> Whenever I'm with Dom Izzo, it's a treat. That's there, what I – There it is. Yeah, Make sure we put yeah, that. That's yeah, new for right. Ryder. Great to see yeah, you. Thanks thank so much. You. Good luck this year. Yeah. We'll talk again soon, all right? Thanks for having me. Randy Edberg, Associate Coach, QB Coach for North Dakota State, joining us off the hop. We'll take a quick break. We come back. Jake Landry will join us, Bison Offensive Coordinator. So we're live on Bison Media, Media Day. Hot Mike rolls on. From the indoor practice facility, we're back right after this. Welcome back, everybody. Hot Mike live on location. Bison Media Day 2024. Later today, this place will be filled with the entire team. Other media outlets here. We're here early to get you ready uh, for what should be a busy day. We're going to carry press conferences live today at 1 o'clock, including the gentleman to my left. Uh, you'll also hear from head coach Tim Polisek, defensive coordinator Grant Olson, and we'll have a bunch of player interviews live coming up later today. So if you want some Bison football coverage, we got you all set. It's great to see offensive coordinator Jake Landry. Last time we did this, I think you had been on the job for about <laughs> two days. So That's right. uh, it's great to see you. First yep. few days of, uh, of camp are in the books. I'll give you the, the typical question. How's it gone so far? Yeah, you know, it, it's been going great. You know, I'm, I'm excited for the guys to get out there. You know, they got after it this summer with Coach Kramer and Coach Napoli. And, you know, just to see the excitement that they have coming out in the first couple of days. And for us as coaches, too, it's yeah. an opportunity for the work that the whole program has put in to, to go out now and, and put it in action. What goal for you, I guess, early in camp? What are you looking for just to see the players out there executing what you want to call? Yeah, you know, I, I think us as an offense uh, as a staff and a, as a as a unit it's getting brilliant at the basics you know uh we we segment um how we install our offense right now we're all in first and second down and just telling our guys that we we want them to be prepared right to get the game to slow down mm. that's the biggest thing for all positions quarterbacks the biggest one probably to get the game to slow down so it doesn't feel so fast and chaotic um but you know that comes through our preparations in the meeting room I asked you this, I think, in the spring, so I'll ask you again, but the familiarity of having a, the 
I guess, easiness for you of having a four-year starter quarterback. How much does that help your transition into this role? Yeah, I mean, Cam Miller's been great, you know, and I knew right away coming in that was going to be a big relationship that I had to build with him and, you know, get to learn him, I think, is the biggest yeah. piece. You know, doing some of our situational stuff, you know, hey, Cam, what do you like here? You know, um, here's what I would be thinking, what, what do you like? You know, to be able to offset and understand what we're both thinking, I think, is, is a big part of our relationship. There's... Obviously, there's inherited pressure that comes with being a play caller. You know that from the other stops you've had. It's a different probably level of pressure being the, the Bison offensive mm-hmm. play caller. What, tell me about the expectations and knowing the inherent pressure that's going to come on when if a play doesn't go well on third and seven, the, the people might be booing at the Fargo Dome about what you, pl- what you called. That's, that comes with the job, mm-hmm. and I understand that. You know, And I think just the, the biggest thing for me, and I've told the offense this and our offensive staff, is I just care about winning football games. Uh, just walking out of the dome or on the road and getting a W. The stats not, might not be the best, yeah. score might not be the best, but at the end of the day, if we walk out of there knowing we won the football game, then we'll get the, we'll get what we need to get corrected, right, and and enhance what what went well. But at the end of the day, it's just winning football games. What is your traits? If you, I ask you about as a play caller, yeah, you know, I've always just kind of felt you got to win the line of scrimmage to win football games, um, and that's been the DNA of of Bison offense and and. You know, I think it's just a matter of um, finding creative ways um, to create explosive plays. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be creative. You know, trying to find plays that are 22 yards or uh, how we categorize it is a a pass of over 15 and a run of over 10. Okay. And trying to find those explosive plays in games. But, you know, talking to the offense and and being in in a unit meeting, it's being disciplined and not beating ourselves. And I always tell the guys, a smart team's a hard team to beat, and we don't want to beat ourselves. How difficult is it for, I, we want to call this play, maybe it doesn't run, I want to do it again. How, how difficult is it to stay out of your head of like, okay, we have to, I want to call this play, but maybe we have to adjust to a different one. Yeah, you know, I think there's I guess a, the flexibility yeah, is what I'm asking. Yeah, you got to have the balance, right? Mm-hmm. And you got to find why the play maybe not have went the way you wanted it to. Maybe somebody fell down. Maybe somebody just missed a block. Mm-hmm. Maybe the look's there, right? Maybe we had the, the right coverage for it and and the guy ran the wrong route you know there, there's multiple things but you can't just move on from a play that you know we spend a lot of time as players and coaches of watching film and you just got to stay true to your game plan but you also got to be flexible enough that you know especially in the first game you got to be able to be flexible enough <laughs> to expect the unexpected yeah especially your first game play calling going up again like Travis Hunter that's mm-hmm. that's quite the challenge of, of game one as a play caller yeah you know they, they have a good football team yeah. you know and right now coach speak right we're going to focus on ourselves right (laughs) and we we got a lot to get better at you know what I mean but once you get into a football game you got to be able to especially in the first game they're going to have a coordinator coming from the NFL you know and and just being able to find out how they're trying to defend us uh you also are coaching the running backs and I think that's a a an area, not necessarily a question mark for Bison fans, but they're intrigued with Tamaric Williams moving on, what you have in that room with some younger guys. Give us the expectations for the running back room in 2024. Yeah, right now we're just we're, we're working together as a group. You know what I mean? And, and we need, right now we got eight guys in that room, and we need all eight guys to understand that they could be on the football field at any point. Mm-hmm. And you don't have time to wait, and you, don't think, you can't think that you, you have an opportunity to you know, take time to learn it. Um, and it's just in the meeting room and going back to being prepared and detailed and understanding whether it's a freshman or it's a senior, right, that we all have to be prepared to get out on the football field and be able to execute. Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to care when you get out there, right, of maybe you didn't get as many reps as you wanted in practice or, you know, throughout the week. Marty Brown has grabbed my attention, Jake, during spring ball. He's done it again through the first three practices, a redshirt freshman. What does what talents does he bring to the table to say, boy, we can utilize him on the field this fall? Yeah, you know, Marty's a is is a big kid, right? And and he gets behind his pads, he runs downhill and he's explosive. You know, he's he's really strong in the weight room. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of it goes back to kind of what I said, trying to get the game to slow down for Marty a little bit, you know, and, and, and through. Pass protection a big thing as well for guys to get on the field, that you got to be able to do that, correct? Without a doubt. Yeah. you got to be in every down back yeah. to be able to play, and you can't have to, you know, um, come off the field because you can't do something because yeah. then, then you're limited to certain personnels and certain plays, you know, that, that, that you got to be an all-encompassing guy, and that's the big challenge for these guys right away is, you know, we're going to install run plays, but we're also installing pass protections and concepts and, you know, just getting the game to slow down and, and being a student of the game, and I take a great pride in being a good teacher, 
right, and, and challenge the guys that you got to be a good student when we're in the, in the meeting room to then go out and apply it yeah. on the field. Yeah. What is the challenge of, of that, knowing the offensive line is fluid as well? Like you're trying to get the guys to hit the right hole, but also knowing you're trying to figure out the right five guys up front. Yeah, you know, for us in the running back room, you know, it's, it's do your job. Right. And and they're going to do their job. We're going to yep. we're going to worry about us. Right. And then we have reads and we've got to execute what we need to. And then um, we'll correct anything that we need to correct based off of what happens. Wide receivers, another spot losing top two receivers. Looking at what you have there, what has either impressed you or say, OK, this is we can count on this guy. In yeah. Twenty four. You know, Raja and Braylon. I mean, those guys just love football. Yep. You know, and it's 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 really fun, you know, talking to Coach Crutchley last night, actually, just how fun those two guys are to coach because they just love ball. They love being out here on the grass and getting after it on the field. And, you know, they're, they're the older guy in the room now and, and, you know, the leadership of right. taking those younger guys and guys with, uh, you know, special teams experience of now we're going to expect to step into a role. You know, it, it is exciting to see the competition that's going to happen throughout the next couple of weeks here. Bryce Lance and Mackay Collins scream because of their height. How can that be an advantage to you for your quarterbacks to get them the football? Yeah, I mean, making making plays, right, vertically down the field, you know, those tight windows, being bigger guys, using their body frames, you know, but it also is going to help us in the run game yeah. to be able to get in there and dig guys out. And, and you know, not only is it Makai, is it, is it Bryce, you know, Tyler Terhart, you know what I mean? Um, Chris Harris is, yeah. you know, excited yep. for, for me. You know, he wasn't out here in the spring. Now he's out right. here. So it's just fun to see some of those guys that you haven't seen now out here in the fall is there a i always been told of this the further away you are from the ball the more a chance you have to play as a, as a freshman is there it, when do you start keeping an eye on guys that just got here in june to say okay he's performing that he could he could potentially help us this year yeah i mean the best players are going to play you know and, and how much time and effort are they putting into it to learn the offense yeah. and um, you know, there's been some guys that, that you notice right away that they're putting in the time and the effort and just lining up right is a big part of it. You know what I mean? If you line up right, you got a chance. So, you know, I, th I think that just starting from the start, yeah. right, and, and knowing where to line up, and then you got a chance to be able to go out and execute. How much is life for yourself? You mentioned guys swimming. Has things settled down for you? I know your head was swimming when spring ball was going. Yeah. Have things settled down for you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I just – Knowing Coach Balsek for as long as I have and, um, you know, knowing the relationships of some of the coaches, I think sometimes when you take a new job, you try to feel out people that, that you're working with on a daily basis, and that was a benefit that I did have getting here, you know what I mean? But you just got to put in the work. Mm. You know, you got to get here early, you got to leave late, you know, and, and you just got to put in the time and the effort to know that you want to be prepared when you get out here. What was life on the road recruiting as now as a Bison coach? How different was that for you? Yeah, it was great. You know, to be able to go out and, and know when you get into a school that people know where you yeah. are, what's been going on in your program, and the culture. You know, I think high school coaches really want to pick your brain yeah. on what is it like there, what do you do, what makes it special. You know, and I think that's what's really cool. And then, you know, when, you, when you're getting in there and you're talking to high school recruits that, you know, there's been a lot of games here that have been played on national TV yeah. and just the, the logo and the power that it, that it holds when you get into a high school. I guess what's going through your mind that first game? You've called games before, now at North Dakota State, being yeah. back in North Dakota, be calling play caller before that game with Colorado. What do you think is going to be going through your mind? Yeah, you know, it's 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 going to be an opportunity to go out there and and to compete, you know, and, and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting for myself, for our team, but at the end of the day, once the ball kicks off, it's just another game of football and just calming your nerves prior to getting up in the press box and, and know at the end of the day, You've, you've prepared, and, and you know that at, you, the ball's kicked off, and it's just, it's just football. Last thing for you, being out in the road, going back to the recruiting deal, mm -hmm. and I was talking with Randy about this, being North Dakota guys and seeing the amount of FBS Power 4 talent now that's in the state. Mm -hmm. As a North Dakota native, you've got to be pumped about that, but also the challenge now of trying to get those guys to stay home is infinitely harder, yeah, correct? You, yeah, you're not wrong. You know, and I think for us right now, we've been really getting after it in recruiting. Really excited about the recruiting class that we have. Um, you know, and talking about the state, you know, it's exciting to go around the state and just realize how passionate Bison yeah. fans are. You know, playing in a golf outing in Velva, I mean, that was that's unbelievable. A fun, that's a football haven out there oh, to begin man. with. It yeah. was great, you know, yeah. but just the kids grow up going to tailgates and going yeah. to games and being a part of it and, and realizing – what this program means to the whole state, you know, it's just been really, you know, I, I, 
probably can say it's, it's been eye-opening for me mm. to, to, to realize um, from all the way out west to the eastern part of the state and everywhere in between that, that people want to be a part of the program in any way that they can. Last thing for you, for during fall camp, when do you, in your mind, want to have a good sense of, okay, this is the the two deep that we can have on offense in your mind? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. You know, for for right now, for us, we've got some good competition going on mm -hmm. at, at some certain spots up front on the perimeter, you know, running back, you know, where, where are we going to be able to feel comfortable with the guys, the 11 guys that are going to jog out there on the first play and then developing the depth behind. And I think that's the benefit of doing the double reps yeah. that we do, that guys are going to have opportunities to do that. But in terms of a two deep, you know, that's not something that, that we've talked about right now. Hey, this is the deadline, yeah. you know, because I told our guys, you're not going to win a job overnight. It's going to be fluid. The depth chart's going to be fluid. You're going to move up. You're going to move down. But you're just looking for that consistent improvement every day. As a former player, how difficult for you during fall camp, how much were you in the, like, okay, I want to be here. I want to be the starter with yep. the, the fall camp. How is it easy to correlate that now as a former player to tell current players that? Yeah, I mean, you just you got to be patient. Right, and you can't you can't live and die on every rep. How tough was that for you to be patient as a player? Well, yeah, when you're younger, <laughs> yeah. you get frustrated for sure. You know what I mean? You you want to be at the level right. that the that the older or you guy want, is, or you want to know, yeah, right, one right. way or the other. Yep, and it's just staying true to believing in what we're saying as coaches mm. and what the older guys are saying too. They've they've been through it yeah. multiple times, and just. Using your resources, you know what I mean? But, yeah, everybody goes through that phase, man, where you get where you get frustrated. When is the part of fall camp you're like, I wish it was – I you can't wait for it to be over? When does when that hit for as a former player? As a former player? Uh, you know, now without the double days yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, you're you know, old school. Yeah, you did two yeah, days. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I, I would say probably at that midpoint, right, yeah. where all of a sudden it gets two to that point. Then, yeah, yeah and, and you start to – you're in that balance of we – Started, it feels like a long time ago, and the game's getting closer and closer yeah. where, you know, you just got to stay focused. As a coach, you would want another month, right? <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or at least an exhibition like the yeah. NFL gets, right? right? Yeah, you, know, you eventually get sick of, you know, Playing against going another, against the same yeah. guy every single yep. day, which makes it exciting when you get into game. Basketball's week. got it. They got exhibition games. You got to make <laughs> something happen with yeah. football, man. It's great to see you. Yeah. Thanks so much for the yeah. time. Appreciate we'll it. We'll check in again during fall camp, okay? Great. Jake Landry, NDSU Offensive Coordinator, joining us here on set. We'll break. Bottom of the hour. Here we come back. We'll hear from one of the Bison seniors, defensive end Dylan Hendricks will join us. We roll on on Bison Media Day. Hot Mike returns right after this. Welcome back, everybody. Live on location, Hot Mike rolls on on this Thursday morning, 2024 Bison Media Day. Just finally get a chance to settle in for our show here. Our thanks to Randy Hedberg and Jake Landry for joining us. Big second hour is on tap for us as well. NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson will join us. We're going to spend about a half hour with Matt about all the big topics surrounding college athletics from the House Settlement with the NCAA. We haven't had a chance to discuss that with him and how it affects the NDSU Athletic Department to fan build up for the game at Colorado and some special stuff happening there so uh, we'll chat about that with Matt at 10 o'clock Derek Lang is going to join us as well NDSU team makers executive director at 1035 former Bison running back uh, to discuss his memories of fall camp and also now on the flip side about fan engagement getting everybody excited for the new season the schedule is dynamite I'll say that and you can say Whatever you want, that have yeah, we're a shill for the company because the games are on WDAY. I'll remind you, we don't have everything game this year. We have nine of the 12 because of the ESPN deal with uh, the Missouri Valley Football Conference. But the football schedule this year, outside of the game with Colorado, which grabs everybody's attention, you have the two biggies at home, the Jacks and UND. Illinois State is a really I think, and we talked about it on Bison Media Zone yesterday, that is a sneaky good game uh, for the opener on the conference. They end the season with a biggie at South Dakota. There's a couple of new opponents on the schedule that are coming to the Fargo Dome for the first time in Towson and Tennessee State. So uh, we'll visit with Langer about all that coming up at 1035. Real quick before we get to our interview with Dylan Hendricks, I mentioned we're three practices in. The Bison have a mandated off day today. They're going to be back uh, tomorrow with their uh, with their next practice the first time they'll put the pads on will be on sunday in anticipation of the second full week of camp we are exactly four weeks from today 
from the season opener at Colorado. We'll be live in Boulder that morning to get ready for the 2024 football season. But so far through camp, a couple of initial impressions. A, defense looks quick, looks fast. Linebackers looking an awfully impressive so far. Defensive backs being coached by uh, Will Johnson and Devin Kleiman have some work to do there. There are some initial guys that are impressing. Jalen Duffy is one. Jalen Crumby is another to keep an eye on in the defensive backfield heading in to this upcoming season. Offensively, everyone wants to talk offensive line. There's not much I can add there other than what you heard from uh, the offensive coordinator. It's definitely going to be fluid. The head coach has told me that as well, that whatever you see now, not necessarily what's going to be the lineup for the Bison when they take the field in Boulder on August the 29th, four weeks from today. Defensively, as we mentioned, that defensive line brings back some great uh, athleticism and depth and experience. Not just Eli Mostart, not just Will Mostart, not just Jackson Dutenheffer and Cody Heisman, uh, but Dylan Hendricks is back. And Hendricks has had quite the road to the field with nearly three full missed seasons because of injury. He had a flourishing 2023. He was a first team All Missouri Valley Conference selection. He's a preseason first team pick. He's also on the preseason watch list for the Buck Buchanan Award, which goes to the top player in FCS. I visited with Dylan yesterday after practice, get his thoughts on last year and expectations for 2024. I haven't had a chance to talk to you since the end of the last year. Tell me the frustrations of not being able to play that last game. Yeah, I know it sucks. I mean, you work all year to hopefully achieve that point of play. And uh, to kind of get injured right there at the end really sucked. And it hurt. And uh, just watching all the guys go out, still happy for them. But obviously it hurt really bad. And obviously, like, hoping that I could be out there, you know. So, but Tell me about expectations yourself, obviously, with an enhanced leadership position. How does that suit you, and, and how do you feel about that heading into the season? Uh, so far, I like it a lot. Uh, it's been different, and I've kind of tried to embrace the change as much as I could. Uh, I love working with the younger guys, trying to get them. Uh, it's all about us, you know, trying to propel this team to be the best that we can possibly be. So I think that's probably my biggest role right now is trying to help out us the, most, the best that I can. About last year, how personally gratifying was it to finally play, have success out there, and show the kind of ability that you've You've had, just haven't had a chance to do it. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a blast, and I think the best thing, though, at the end of the day, you know, is just getting wins. And obviously, it didn't finish the way that we wanted it to. So I think, no matter what the stats say, what awards you get or whatever, that doesn't really mean a lot to us. Uh, it's going out there and winning football games. Describe what uh, Carl, Coach Little John has meant in so far, and what is the energy being a former Bison? How much has that changed the defensive end? Yeah, no, I think it changes it a lot. Uh, Carlton uh, and his own personality, uh, it's been awesome so far. And so much pride in this program and, you know, all the old references of how he used to have it and stuff is always great. And, uh, you know, it's great just to see the love that he has for this program and he's pouring it back into us. It means the world to me and it means the world to our position group and the guys around us. A few young guys there that have played. Kelton's played a little bit. Toby's got out there. For p fans that haven't seen him yet, give us what to expect from these guys and how much you're going to count on them in 20 yeah, I think we're going to count on them a lot in 2024. Uh, we look at rotating a lot of guys. we got a lot of talent. Uh, Toby's a big kid. He's really powerful. He's fast. Kelton, the same thing. I mean, he's long, lanky, and fast. So, I mean, we got a lot of guys with a lot of talent, and we're, look, we're looking forward to utilizing everybody in their own unique ways. How much have you talked with Hunter? Hunter had a you know, similar situation, ready to play. He got hurt, missed all of last season. To get him back and add that into your room as well. Yeah, I know. And uh, – it means a lot because when you get hurt like that, you know, pull a season from a guy, man, it's it's tough and it's hard to come back. But I think the best thing about Hunter is he just he had a killer mindset and he attacked his whole rehab. He attacked getting back and he's juiced now. And I'm super excited to go out there and ball out with him. How good can this defense be? I guess we'll find out. To have your name out there, you know, Buchanan watch list, all conference. I know you're worried about wins. What does that say, though, when peers and other teams are recognizing the kind of talent you bring to the field. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think that goes a lot to say against the guys that I go up against every day, too. You know, just looking at the talent and uh, on the other side of the ball and how they, how hard they push us to be as good as we can be, you know, I think it goes both ways. But it's, it's awesome, and I'm very happy for it. But, yeah. I'm interested just going up against a guy like Gray Zabel every day. How much does that make you better? Oh, it's insane. Uh, Gray is amazing. He's crazy athletic, got great feet, great hands, and he's strong, smart. You know, it's tough. It's tough to go up against a guy like that. And it, 
but it pushes you and makes you want to be better, you know, because you know how good of a player that you are, you know, but it's, it's amazing, you know, like they say, iron sharpens iron, and I think Gray is a prime example of that. Last question, with Coach Polisic being a Wisconsin guy, how much is that, have you guys connected on that, and just what does that mean for the other Wisconsin natives that, that he's a Wisconsin guy as well? Oh, I think that's awesome. Uh, all of us Wisconsin guys kind of get together, you know, and, like, we got our own, like, little uh, connection going on. Obviously, Goose, you know, is a Wisconsin guy, so – we all chop it up, and it's it's a good it's a good thing that we got going here. Hendricks, there, we appreciate his time, and you know the struggles he had. As I mentioned, the neck injuries twice; he had a broken neck. We profiled that last year during the football season to come back from that and have the kind of impact that I think Matt Entz was hoping for when they recruited him out of Pulaski, Wisconsin, in 2018 to finally come here and then show that five years later made it well worth the wait. And you heard the answer he gave during that interview I thought was pretty uh, telling about the road back to the field and now hoping for even a bigger and better 2024. They're going to need it out of that defensive line. We mentioned with the young guys that we talked about, Toby Anena and Kelton McCaslin, those are two young defensive ends. They have a lot of high hopes on, haven't played a ton of football yet. You have Hunter Zenzen, who's yet to play a down for the Bison. Remember this time last year, Super excited to see what the Barnesville native Iowa State transfer could do. And then uh, had the Frank injury and didn't play a down last season. No, there's a lot of excitement to have him back at the defensive end spot. That's something we've talked about in past years before we go to break, where the Bison have had that devastating end, the one that could get to the quarterback from, you know, you look back all the way to Cole Jurek and Kyle Emanuel, who were devastating, a Coulter Boyer in the early days of the Division I run that just got pressure on the quarterback to the later days of Greg Menard and Derek Tuska that were just disruptors on the defensive line. Brayden Thomas certainly fit that role for the Bison in 2021. Not sure North Dakota State has had that over the last handful of years, last two years, 22 and 23, where the guy that you knew off the edge that had to take up two offensive linemen uh, can... Hendricks be that guy in 2024? Potentially. I know the, the Bison coaching staff has a lot of hope and Kelton McCaslin could fill that role. That's a lot of expectation for a man who's going to be a sophomore this upcoming fall for NDSU. We're due for a break here. We'll come back. We'll wrap up our one. We'll get an Olympic update as well. No, those are going on. The U.S. men's basketball team played yesterday and won. The Twins won a game. We'll give you updates and everything else happened in the sports world and a big second hour plan here on Bison Media Day for Hot Mike, live on location from the indoor practice facility. We roll on back after this. Welcome back, everybody. Wrapping up our first hour live on location here at the indoor practice facility at North Dakota State. Anticipation Bison Media Day coming up later today. I'll give you the full schedule here before we wrap up our first hour. So this afternoon at 1 o'clock, head football coach Tim Polisek will address the media across the street at the Sanford Health Athletic Complex inside their media room. That will be followed by offensive coordinator Jake Landry and then defensive coordinator Grant Olson will all speak to the media. That's at 1 o'clock. You'll be able to watch it live here on Extra. Also stream it on WDAY Plus and Inforum.com. Then at 2 o'clock, we'll come back over here and uh, the players and coaches will be uh, available for interviews. We're going to live stream a set of interviews that I'm doing um, today, for ranging from uh, the quarterbacks, each of the quarterbacks, running back, linebacker. We got each position group covered, and uh, we're excited for that. That's coming up at 2 o'clock. You'll be able to see that online exclusive at WDAY Plus and Inforum.com. So that's our schedule uh, for today in anticipation for the upcoming season. I mentioned four weeks out from today, uh, we'll be in Colorado to get ready for the season opener for the Bison against the Buffaloes. A couple things I wanted to uh, to get to here because we're, we're pretty Bison heavy today. Obviously, the Twins with a big win yesterday over the Mets, so they avoid uh, the sweep. Minnesota off today and then back home uh, tomorrow night. The City Connect jerseys will return because it's a Friday night game for the White Sox. Uh, Chicago enters on a 17-game losing streak. The White Sox lost again yesterday uh, to the Royals 10-3. So as we sit here on this Thursday morning, both the Twins and Royals are six games back of the Guardians heading into that series. Chicago will enter that game at 27-84, and 84, just a mere 17-game losing streak. Uh, Joe Ryan will be on the mound for... Uh, the Twins in that game tomorrow night. So we'll see how uh, how that will go. The Twins have feasted on the White Sox. They've won 9 of 10 so far 
this season. Mentioned the U.S. men's basketball team won yesterday against the South Sudanese. There was no one-point victory. They uh, were able to take care of business there. Their final game of the preliminary round is on Saturday against uh, Puerto Rico before they move into the knockout stage there. The USA women play later today against Belgium. We'll preview that in what to watch before uh, we say goodbye here. The other news, and this for you streaming nerds out there, we've been hearing about this for a while, was announced today. Venue Sports, that's the new streaming service for Fox, ESPN, and Warner Brothers Discovery. So Turner and TBS will start at $43 a month. Those who sign up at launch this fall will be guaranteed that subscription price for at least a year, which is nice considering every subscription service, namely Peacock, wants to change. They added $2 for the Olympics. but So that would give you Fox, I'm assuming the Big Ten Network under that umbrella, ESPN, everything they have, and uh, Turner, which now will have one year left of the NBA on that, at $43 a month. So if you wanted to go that way, you don't have uh, – I the, the thing that I'm still waiting on is clearance on the NFL games. We're not sure about that, but uh, if you want to go that way, you can do that. That's starting now, Venue Sports. So another thing to potentially stream if you want to. We'll break. We come back. Second hour on tap. Big hour there. Derek Lang will join us and Athletic Director Matt Larson around the bend with all the hot topics in college athletics. We'll do that when hour two of Hot Mike begins right after this. Networks of WDAY. W-D-A-Y. Here's Dom Izzo. Welcome back, everybody. Hot Mike live on location. Bison Media Day 2024. Later today, we'll hear from head coach Tim Polisek, the coordinators, the players. You'll see it all live here on Extra and also on WDAY+. It's always great to see NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson to give a State of the Union as we get ready for uh, a new college year. I was joking with you the other day here. I was jo- first time of the Division One era. The Bison are practicing football in July. I know. Everything keeps getting earlier. It's August 1. It already feels like we've been, we've been back to work for a bit, but... Such is life now with the Division One calendar, right? It, it really is. I think that's just the world that you know we kind of live in right now, and especially as you you know we continue to look at recruiting calendars yep. and portals and and just those things. We ended up not approving the the signing day in in June, but who knows what the future holds there? I think regardless, it, if you ask Coach Polasek, it really has changed what our summer looks like anyway. You right. think the amount of uh, official visits, or excuse me, unofficial visits that we had in the month of June that we traditionally haven't had and so it's just it's just ramped up and you know the the time between when school ends to when it starts or when teams report just gets smaller (laughs) and smaller and smaller and so you know we have to two you have to one make sure that we're preparing for you know that next round of of seasons and student athletes here but also you got to say it's a long year too you got to get your your staff some time to to get out re-energize and so that way there's you know, as, as strong and ready to go for the following year. With the team reporting earlier, that all the support staff has to come back, oh, yeah. correct? Right. So, yeah. so dorms, all that. How much is that for you as well? You're under. Is that under your umbrella? You're reaching out with your support staff to say we have to have everything ready yeah. to go here. Yeah, we're really fortunate. I mean, we have great partners on campus, whether it's campus dining, right. you know, campus housing. Uh, Ryan Ostrom and his folks do a really good job. A lot of our student athletes still live off campus. You know, it's really a lot of your freshmen, your transfers. Yep and a handful of upperclassmen who live, but everybody's eating on campus. Yep. And so really working with those partners on campus to just make sure everything's coordinated. And the good thing is we've, a lot of the same folks are in, in place there. And so they've actually been helping us. We've had some transition on our staff mm. a little bit. And so so that's been really helpful. But yeah, I mean, from all of our support staff to support cap, uh, folks on campus, you know, it's a couple of days earlier than, than <laughs> right. what they're – so their summer's ended yeah. earlier as well. But I know from our staff's perspective, you know, there's also a level of excitement having teams back. Once they get got back. To, got to meet with the soccer team yesterday. They're out in Dakota Field today. Volleyball's here next week. So, for us, too, the, the energy, the, the excitement begins, starts right? to go, yeah. too. So, I think we're I think we're all ready for it. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, it's good to see some kids back on campus. Well, July used to be, like, the sacred land for everybody, right, mm-hmm. in, in college athletics. No one yeah. touched that. But I have a feeling with the big boy division, of football that they're going to want to move to week zero to start is that you think that's going to july is going to get gobbled up in your mind (laughs) you know on some level i do especially when you're now incorporating a playoff game right or or playoff games now again it only impacts 12 teams but still you know that ends up for a you know there's only so many weeks and so i i wouldn't be surprised if the start of football season gets moved back uh in some way shape or form and then okay then how does that impact fcs are there opportunities for us for 
you know, I've, I've asked recently, too, is why do we only get to play 12 every X number like of every years? Every five, six years, yeah. You know, if, if that's something that, you know, not every school has to do it. Well, not every school does it now, but why not have that opportunity yep. if that's something that we want to do? So so I think there is going to be a lot of movement, again, just looking at the schedule because you're, you're just landlocked. Some of that's due to TV. Yep. Some of that's due to when other sports are starting. So, But I think there's going to be continued to be conversation about trying to build in some well, time. Well, visiting with Gene Taylor when I was out at Big mm-hmm. 12 Media Days, he's on the playoff committee as well, right. Matt, that January 20th is a – that's the national championship mm-hmm. game this year. That is a long – long yeah. time we're that's two weeks away from the super bowl yeah. when they're playing that that's a yeah. long college football season well now they know what it feels like <laughs> that's true uh, you know i would argue i mean <laughs> you know that's that's basically what ndsu's been been going through for the yes. last yep. last 14 years yep. or so you know where you're playing 16 15 yep. games a year and you know you're going from august 1st to, yep. to the second week of january first week of january whatever it is and then you're rolling right back into getting your team ready for the next year so yeah i mean it's that's where <laughs> when you can build in weeks and in a lot of ways it wouldn't be the the worst thing in the world to maybe build in another buy opportunity yep. you know so i mean because if you have your you know your first couple of conference games you have your buy in week three or four that's a that's a long yep. stretch unless you get a play a, a buy in the playoffs or now again different at the fbs level right. where you know you may have off for a month with your bowl game it's 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 certainly different for us no and so a buy opportunity in there probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world we haven't had a chance to chat there's i think since may and there's been about eight different stories i yeah. want to hit you on but the yeah. big one i think for fans that watch my show or listen to it is the nca and the house deal and how mm-hmm. that affects fcs schools how it affects north dakota state so yeah. in the best way can you summarize how that that lawsuit affects what your bottom yeah. line. Well, there's there's probably a couple things. There's the there's the actual settlement piece, and then it's the things that come after the settlement in terms of you know Division One governance moving forward. Yep. And so I think if you look at just the settlement piece right now, the settlement that was presented to uh, the judge uh, was basically there's two things. There's a there's a go back payment, and then there's a, a move forward payment. The go back payment is upwards of probably two point six five billion. Yep. In somewhere in in that area, um, and then and there was also in that in that settlement agreement was this is the way the NCAA would propose uh, paying for it, uh, and roughly I think again I might be off a little bit with the numbers, but roughly 1.1 of that the NCAA would pay on behalf of the membership uh, from reserves from yeah. other mechanisms that they can that they have at, uh, at their disposal, and then the other 1.5 gets broken up between all of Division One membership. Uh, I think if you look at, again, and, and this is where I think there's been a little bit of um, a disagreement on some of this, is that, you know, the, the, the certified class is mostly Power 5 right. or Power 4, however you want to describe it, but Power 5 for the case of this discussion, uh, football and men's, men's, basket, basketball. men's basketball student athletes. So that's the majority of the class. As you look at, that's probably where 90 to 95 percent of the payments are going to go to, those, those student athletes or those former student athletes. When you look at the actual breakdown that the NCAA pr- proposed in the settlement, take out if you take the Power Five out for a second, of that 1.5 roughly, non-Power Five schools are going to pay 990 <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> Your Power Five schools are going to pay 660. Right. And so I think that's where a lot of programs um, that aren't in the Power Five have an issue. Not only are we taking money away from from our budgets and and the way we pay for it essentially is we'll have reduced distribution from the NCAA. And this is over a course of a 10-year period. So, like, from the NCAA tournament, that, that if the money that would go to the, the Summit League, per se, that would be less under this? Well, so there's Do two things. Right? Well, yeah, there's okay. two things. Not only will the, the, the leagues are also going to use, because the leagues get distribution. Right. So they'll get, they'll get units or they get distribution based off of NCAA yep. revenue as well. So every league across Division One gets that. So they're going to have a reduction, okay. which will impact all of yep. its members. Uh, but then every member institution is also going to have a reduction uh, in the in the financial support that they get, so it's a little bit of a double whammy there. And again, where where we argue is we're going to do with our student athletes are going to do with less, so we can pay Power Five football and men's basketball players who didn't have the opportunity to experience NIL. So that's where I think a little bit of yeah. a rub from I would say your non Power Five schools has come from. And for I understand it, Matt, and you, know, you may not know the the non Power Five really didn't have any. Represent any say in this, correct? Is that is that? Accurate? I mean, I would say unless you unless you count President Charlie Baker as our our representation, yeah. but essentially, uh, and and the, and the worst part is, in my mind, the mm-hmm. worst part is. So you look at the settlement portion. Uh, it was the NCAA and it was the Power Five commissioners who negotiated the right. the um, 
the payment schedule. Hey, good for them, I guess, right? <laughs> and then as you look on a move forward on a move forward basis and determining <laughs> some of the elements that you've probably seen in the long form document that was given to yep. the judge in terms of some of the things moving forward, there was no representation from yeah. non power five there either. So not only do we have no representation of what we have to pay, but we have no representation of what the rules of engagement are going to be moving forward. So and that, um, it, it, it's frustrating yeah. on a lot on a lot of levels. Uh, again, I look at you know 365 programs at the Division One level. You know the Power Five represents 65. So there's a lot of folks yep. that don't have a voice right now and, and really aren't being considered in a lot of ways. And so that's really frustrating. And again, I would say it's on us to, um, whether you want to say take a stand or it's on us to say, okay, hey, we're, we're not okay with that. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll see what, what how that all kind of, you know, fleshes out. How does that forward. affect your bottom line? Is there things that fans would be accustomed to say, okay, you used yeah. to do this and now you can't because you've got to yeah. pay this? You know, I, I think the biggest thing for us is, you know, one of the things we've always, whether it's been a budget cut, whether it's been a reduction in revenue in some other area, what we've always tried to do is make sure it's not impacting our student athletes yeah. and it's not impacting our, our ability to compete for championships. And so uh, typically we've tried to take and absorb more of that from an administrative standpoint. Maybe we do a little bit less here, a little bit less there, but nothing that I think our fans would necessarily notice. Um, and then certainly hopefully our, our student athletes don't notice. Yeah. And at the same time, too, we always try to do, too, is, okay, if we're going to, we can say, okay, we're going to lose revenue, but, hey, what are our opportunities to maybe ex- increase some in other areas? And that's where we're, we're focusing a lot of our efforts in a couple of areas where we think we can increase some revenue opportunities. So maybe it's, it's we're not taking the full brunt of what the NCA yeah. reduction is, and, you know, we can hopefully mitigate that a little bit. A couple of big picture items I want to get to. You've had the collective for about a year, the Green mm-hmm. and Gold Collective. How has mm-hmm. that relationship gone, and where do you take it in year two in your mind? Yeah, you know, it's what, well, it's an interesting time right now. And I say to, the first part of that question is uh, is I think the relationship has been has been good. We meet uh, with the folks from the collective, Jay and Jay Bartley and Kurt Wittich, at least once a month, uh, usually. Just again, more so, we're on the same page. There's a level of transparency of what they have going on, what we have going on. There's some synergy opportunities. There's also um, they have events and stuff going on yep. where they need some support from our coaches. We have those, and so really more to make sure that we're coordinated on a little bit. Page. We're not yep. we're not kind of we're not cannibalizing each other. We're yep. not going head to head, and uh, from that standpoint, so I think that's actually been been really good. And and I and I would say to their credit, when you look across mid major collectives, I I think they've done a good job mm. uh, in terms of. Uh, you know, being able to support our student athletes and, you know, and, and engage with our fan base. I think moving forward, which is going to be really interesting, and we actually had a conversation with, with those folks the other day, is just part of this settlement is there's going to be a greater opportunity for athletic departments to compensate student athletes for NIL. So you guys directly do it now? C- C- correct. can do it C- now. Well, that's, it hasn't okay, been. I signed off I think that. as part okay. of this settlement, yeah, there's okay. going to be mechanisms in which we okay. will. And so it just begs the question, what does that mean for collectives Correct. down the road? Yep. Are there is there still a place for them? Maybe, maybe not. And part of it's going to be what again? What are these rules of engagement a little bit? Um, and so, but what I would say is, even if a lot of that stuff ends up coming in house, I mean, there's a really good infrastructure, and that's a credit to those guys. And I think the program that they built, and you know, we want to make sure if anything, if if it does end up coming in house at some point, we can build on that momentum that yep. they've been able to put together and and service our student athletes. So again, a lot of probably unanswered questions, yeah. I would say more than anything else, but um, but to date, I mean, I think they've done a good job of, and, and to me, the, the nice part is too, is, you know, I think folks sometimes forget student athletes have a responsibility to, to do something for any sort of compensation they received. And a nice byproduct of this has been, you've seen a lot of student athletes promoting student yep. athletes, student athletes promoting um, other teams events. And, and I think that's actually been really, really cool to see. Yeah. Uh, and it's been really genuine and it's been it. So it's been neat and it's been across the board. So that part's been really nice. Two of things for I want to next segment talk on any issue stuff. The we know Patty Viverito is going to step down mm-hmm. as Summit Lee, or as Missouri Valley Football Conference yeah. Commissioner. Your role in that and, and determining who the next yeah. commissioner, how much do the ADs and the mm-hmm. presidents have a say and who's going to be the next commissioner? Well, it's a, a huge part. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, well, your president's council, they're the ones who make the decision, you know, are, the, right? are the CEOs yeah. of the league, essentially. The, the commissioner reports to them. Um, this is, there's been a lot of conversation. I mean, obviously, 
the the institutions. It's just an interesting dynamic. We've talked about this before. You have institutions who are who are full all sport members in the Missouri Valley Conference. You have ones that are in yep. the Summer League, and then you have Youngstown, who's in the Horizon. <laughs> And so it's it's a it's a little jumbled at times, but I think at least when you when you talk about the success the Missouri Valley Football Conference has had in football, um, whether that's postseason, regular season, non-conference, all of those things, I think you'd say all those institutions value the sport of football. And so really trying to navigate um, one who the right leader is, two what the what the right makeup is going to be of the league, because again there's. Again, this without getting into a ton of weeds, just NCA governance. What's the place of a single sport league? What's the voice that they have? What are the voting opportunities? Yes. So, yep. so those are all the things that we need to weigh a little bit. Uh, one nice thing that has come that has evolved is there's an FCS oversight committee. It used to be football oversight. Everything which Patty's been a member of. Yeah, and yeah. she's been a member of. And the nice thing is moving forward at the FCS level, the FCS oversight. Every every league is going to be represented Excellent. either with okay. a coach. Um, an AD, uh, okay. you know, some other representative. So every league will have a voice. So even your single sport league yep. will continue to have a voice. So that helps with some of the governance. So really a lot of it is we, ha- we need to spend the, the better part of the next six months. And we have, a, we have a committee that's put together. It's comprised of presidents and ADs to really determine – What's the best model for the league moving forward? Is it affiliated with one of the all-sport conferences? Is it staying standalone as a single-sport conference? If so, what's the level of investment that needs to be made? Uh, so those are all okay. the things that we're talking about right now. And, you know, again, building off uh, really great success, how do we keep that momentum go- moving forward? Could you say, just for my un- understanding, Missouri Valley Football Conference under the Summit League umbrella, Would that is that – what you're trying to say like that? Well, I think what you would I think what you would see is regardless, it would still be um, separate operations. Okay. You know, but I think if I go back to when I first when I first was here, there was a stronger affiliation with the MVFC and the MVC in terms of day to day operations and some okay. of those things. And probably oh five or so years ago, there was more of a split where it truly is standalone. The finances are standalone. Okay. Um, the voting, some of those things yep. are just different. Yep. And so I could see really where the, the value of, of being affiliated more closely with an all-sport conference is, is you have a seat at the table at uh, all of the, the conference commissioner meetings, you have votes, all of those things. Football's being more regularly represented in an NCAA governance okay. standpoint outside of just football-specific um, circumstances. And then there's an opportunity for that league to be able to invest in some of the things that, you know, like we've talked about marketing yep. promotions, yes. you know, do we, yep. do we move towards a, uh, an in-person media day to yeah. kick off the season? Yep. Just some of those yep. things that, you know, again, the commissioner role is really important too, but really is as ADs and presidents, what do we want the league to look like moving forward? Correct. Uh, I have to ask you, have you got a phone call about possible conference realignment? Uh, I have not. I have not. Okay. <laughs> Do you think it's as it quelled for the minute now, or do you think it's we're a breath away from, you know, Florida State and Clemson want to go and we're back in this whole thing again? Well, that's a that's a pretty big they, yeah. That's certainly because they I keep think, threatening. Yeah, right? yeah. Which is that's a heck no. Of a I thing mean, to I see. think that's one that everybody's kind of watching. Right. I, I I would think, and again, unless something's imminent or pending or whatever it is, there's a lot of unanswered questions mm-hmm. right now. You know, you're talking roster limits, you're talking opt-ins, you're talking revenue share, you're talking increase of scholarship amounts. There's a lot of pieces right now. I would be surprised if there are any major movements or major shakeups uh, at this point. Because, again, if you're – particularly if you're a group of five school right now and you're looking at where the power fives are going to be required to be, you know, they're going to be revenue sharing 20, yeah. 22 million – not a lot of group of fives has the opportunity to do that. Nope. So what does that look like for them on their campuses? Are they going to opt in in certain sports? Well, if you do, well, now the roster cap has to go across all sports. So it's just there's a lot of nuances. There's some framework right now, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions. So I would be, I would be shocked if there's major, major conference re- realignment okay. moves right now. Now, six months, eight months, ten months after – kind of the rules of engagement yeah. in place, then, yeah, you might start to see a little bit more of that. Well, if your phone rings, you can go. Okay. If, if somebody calls. Yes, actually here, was, okay? it actually was ringing <laughs> while I was sitting here. but Let's break. We come back. We'll talk about the excitement for the Colorado game yep. and what fans can expect if they're going to Boulder. We'll do yep. that on the other side of the break. Matt Larson joining us here live. Bison Media Day. Hot mic returns. We're back right after this.
Welcome back, everybody. Back live here at NDSU Media Day. Big day today to see the football team. Live interviews coming up later today. Back with Bison Athletic Director Matt Larson. i got about three other rapid-fire things I want to get to you, so we'll try and go as fast as we can. Summit League Basketball Tournament going to a weekend finish. Big fa- a fan of that? Yeah, a huge fan. Okay. Huge fan. I, I think one of the things that, again, the Summer League Tournament is phenomenal. I mean, it's been it's been really good. We've had teams in the championship game a number of years. It's, it's one of the best mid-major, really any basketball tournament it, at the college level. Uh, but the challenge has always been it starts on a Friday, ends on a Tuesday. Yep. That makes it harder for uh, some fan bases to travel. So the idea of starting on a Thursday – and then ending on a Sunday is something we're really excited about. You Six know, years in a row, it. the Bison have had a team in the championship yeah, game, men or is, women. So. Which is huge, and, yep. that's, and that's, hard, that's hard to do. That's hard to do. So, so they have to come. I've, I've heard that's all. The pushback has been Tuesday night. I don't want to trap. Like, now if it's Sunday, okay. no, there's no excuse anymore. We've removed correct? all the excuses, <laughs> so I don't, you know, I don't know what else to tell folks. I mean, it is. It's, a, it's an awesome tournament. It really is, and you know, and it, it'd be nice to see a little more green and yep. yellow in there. Absolutely, it is. Uh, it's an Olympic year. Your next FBS game is the next Summer Olympics of 2028. Yeah. Is there one percolating before that? Well, we're definitely. I mean, we, uh, you know, as we've said, we continue to have conversations. Todd and I actually just talked a little bit. Uh, we work really closely with Dave Brown of Gridiron. Dave's a kind of the scheduling guru, and although he never seems to pick up the phone and call us about an FBS <laughs> game, so I give him a hard time, but. But, uh, but no, I mean, again, I, I've always said, like, it's, it's a priority for us. It really is. And, and we, we literally call every FBS school that has an opening in a date where we have an opening to say, hey, what, what do you think? We'll, we'll come. <laughs> and and it, there haven't been a lot of, uh, lot of yeses so on the other end. So off of that question, when Pete Thamel went on his podcast with Reese Davis and said that whoever scheduled the Bison game should be fired, I'm sure that made He's things. He's not helping me. He's not helping our cause at all. <laughs> Because you know, I asked I mean, him about that when we were really in Las isn't. Vegas. He really is. Yeah. And because and, and the tough part is, too, is like, you know, I talked at practice the other day. Like, Pete, Pete's wired in. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. really is. And people, you know, when he speaks, people respect it. So he's not helping us <laughs> uh, with this. But, yeah, I mean, it's it, 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 all the things we've talked about. Um, and it's too bad because, I mean, it's, it's you know, you look at this game coming up. Our fans are really excited yeah. about it. We're going to have a great presence out there. Our guys are excited about it. Just the opportunity to go out there and and match up and, and see where we stand and um, you know it, and clearly there's buzz about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be playing on national Correct. TV Thursday yep. night to kick off to to college football. And so ESPN recognizes it. And so that's the part that and because those are the things we always sell to folks when we say, hey, if 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 you'll play us, we're going to bring fans. We're yep. going to sell tickets yep. for you. Unlike some other programs that'll go and, you know, they'll, they'll take the ones that you, they get for free and that's it. And, you know, we're going to have, I think, north of 7,500 okay, That was my there. next question. So what do you, what do you fan turn out? What are you expecting for Boulder? I do. I, I think we're going to wow. have north of 7,000 oh, okay. roughly. What did you have um, for again, Tucson? Do you know off the top of your head? I think we were – I thought it was like north of 9 or 10. Okay. You know, okay. and then I thought I was even more. Yep. And so, I, it, again, and that's really more – that's that's – Matt Larson's, uh, you know, <laughs> straw poll a little bit, but but really is. I mean, there's an unbelievable buzz of of folks that are that are making their trip out there, and and it helps. It's not a, not a short drive, but it's drivable. Yep. It's easy to get to. I actually think there's a benefit now of having it on Thursday versus on Saturday. Folks could literally get out there, enjoy all the festivities, come back on a Friday or even Saturday morning, and you got Labor Day weekend, and so you kind of get the best of the both worlds. You get your last lake weekend. You know in before the <laughs> before the summer's over so i think there's a lot of positive but there's there's a lot of buzz there's a lot of buzz what do you have planned what have you guys talked about for either and i can talk with langer about yeah. this as well about for the fans that do go yeah. what to expect when they get out there yeah he'll definitely have some more details i mean and so we're going to do team makers is doing an event on wednesday um and derek and and a number of team maker folks are going out i think they actually get out there on tuesday wow. so they're okay. going to be out there a couple of a couple of days earlier but we'll do an event uh, on Wednesday at a local brewery there. It's an inside-outside option, really cool venue. Emily Summer, Sumner on our team maker staff has done a really good job. And so we're going to start promoting that out to folks. And really, it's open to the public, nice. welcome folks okay. to come out. And um, so that'll be Wednesday, the day before the game. And then Thursday, uh, I know the foundation is, is doing some stuff at the Embassy Suites. Uh, I think the first maybe 350 folks are going to have the opportunity to go there. and So it might be an invite-only thing. Okay. But, but then also trying to work with some of the other venues there to say, okay, hey, where's a place that NDSU fans can go and congregate? Yeah. And, 
they don't need our fans don't need a ton of direction. I mean, they'll they'll figure it out <laughs> yes, and make their will. own way. Yep. But but if we can make it a little easier and say, hey, here's a couple of places that are going to be maybe bison friendly and send our folks there, certainly want to do that. How as well. big of an alumni base do you have in Denver, Boulder, that area? You know, it's funny actually when you look at all of our outside of North Dakota. In Minnesota, those are obviously our two bigger spots. And Phoenix, I know, is a huge uh, Phoenix, one. Phoenix, yep. Southern California. Yep. Colorado is a, a, a okay. pretty good size okay. one. It really is. And so we're going to try to tap into a lot of those folks as best we can. And then the combination of folks flying in from all over parts of the country and then yep. driving or flying in from Fargo and, Min- and Minnesota. So, yeah, it's going to be a good contingent out there. To have that to catapult, I mean, the excitement around it, if you're able to win this game, what kind of buzz can that bring the, to the athletic department out of that yeah, it's huge buds especially especially when it's a nationally televised yeah. game and you're going to have eyeballs i mean there's so much excitement going into the start of college football season across the country anyway people are watching every game that's on <laughs> uh and obviously there's a there's a um, it's a little polarizing out out in boulder anyway and so people are going to no you know they're going to want to tune in and and get eyeballs on that game so you know there, there's huge opportunities there and then you you and then i think if you package that with I think the way we finished the end of last season and, and just finished yep. really strong, have a lot of returners. Uh, Coach Polisek brings just a little bit of energy, I think, to the program. And we could probably talk all day about him and just the presence that he's had, not just back in the football well, I program. Well, I was going to ask you, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, that was one good. of the reasons you hired him. Yeah. Do, do, I think there's a palpable excitement that's yeah. now there that maybe was yeah. lacking, and that's no shot to Matt Entz, but that was not there. Have, yeah. have you felt that? Have you seen that out there? There is. And like you said, I mean, it has nothing to do Matt Entz versus Tim Polisek. You know, sometimes change – it's just it's just new yep. it's a new perspective it's all those things and and i think we're you know tim haven't been here two times before he served under two head coaches yep. coach bowl and chris and coach Kleiman, who who different styles yep. but but i think he learned a lot from both of them he talks a lot about what he learned from kirk ferentz but one of the things i think he took out of coach bowl's kind of playbook is just the importance of of getting around the community getting around the state uh, building relationships. One of the things, you know, he said when we interviewed him, he's like, hey, Jill and I don't have kids. He's like, I'm going to be bison football 24-7 all the time. And and he's lit, and he yeah. truly has lived yeah. up to that uh, in a lot of ways. And, you know, this is, we talk about, this is a this is a big job outside of the expectations on the field. But to be a PR person for the program, yep. to, to be out there and building relationships, donors want to hear from him. So he's done a really, really good job of that in addition to, in addition to, you know, all of his coaches were at every morning workout, building relationships with our student athletes and building those bonds and all the things that they did from the time he stepped on campus up until when they started practice on Monday. Last question for you. Have you felt a renewed energy from the fan base? Did you feel it needed it? That yeah. things were – we've talked about it. We've talked yeah. about ticket sales. We've yeah. done that ad yeah. nauseum, that yeah. there is a added jolt to the fan base for this upcoming year? I, I think so. And I think it's a combo – some of the things we just talked yep. about – you know, the first game, the first FBS game in a couple of years, having Coach Polisek and his energy and just new perspective. Uh, we have a really, really good home schedule in my yeah, mind. Yeah, t- I talked about um, before you came on. Yep. You know, we have you, – you look at all the preseason polls, and, again, we can argue what those mean, or but players returning. Yep. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot – we have a lot of players who've played a lot of football yep. for us. But we also have some young guys who I know the staff's really excited about. And so there is absolutely some buzz. We are, and maybe on a later – uh, a later uh, show we can have either Cam Bastion, our director of marketing, come on and talk about some of the things you're going to see differently okay. from a Bison game day. And, you know, and we're – I'm going to be at the city commission uh, meeting on Monday and, you know, Start still trying dome, to move the Fargo, the, dome. The Fargo yep. dome. And and that's a huge, huge piece. And that'll that, be on the ballot for November is the that's, hope on that's, that? That's okay. the hope. And, okay. and that's a huge piece. Yep. And, um, you know, as the primary tenant of yep. that building – uh, a 30-year-old building, there yep. are some things that need There's to no be addressed. Doubt. And, again, not just for Bison football, but any patron Correct. who goes there, any event that goes there. And it's a jewel of our community, and we need to upgrade yeah. it. Uh, Summit League going to get a 10th team anytime soon? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, would say, I, don't, I wouldn't say imminent. Okay. But, but we, actually look at this, we actually look at this a lot. We spend a lot of time in our meetings about membership. Uh, and as I've said to you, membership's really important. Yep. You don't just take somebody to take Correct. somebody. It has to be the right fit, the right mix, philosophically. All of the things that, that I think are important to us, you know, in terms of having some stability. So uh, we're looking. We've had conversations, but nothing in minute right now. All right. So check that one out. Yep. Thanks so much for the time this it. morning. Appreciate it. Great to see you. Thanks yep. for always doing Same. this. We'll do this again soon, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Matt Tom. Larson, NDSU Athletic Director, joining us here on site. We'll take a break. Derek Lang on deck. 
I guess we can record that interview as well uh, with Langer <laughs> to get some insight and tell what's going on with the with the Colorado game and looking back as his time as a player. We're back on Hot Mike right after this. Welcome back, everybody. Hot Mike live on location. Bison Media Day 2024 style. We'll hear from head football coach Tim Polisek coming up at 1 o'clock today. Man to my left played for Tim Polisek. Gosh, I'm going to date you. 11 years ago? <laughs> Don't make me feel I'm that sorry old. about Hey, I'm old, too. I was covering years. you when that was happening. How about that? that? Time Derek, flies. Derek Isn't Lang joined us, NDSU team makers, director. It's great to see you. Um, just you think about that, that fall camp. What comes to mind? Memories of, of Bison fall camp. It was a grind. Oh, yeah. And obviously the the times have changed in terms of, you know, the number of two days you can do, oh, yeah. the number of off days they uh, have. Uh, um, so I just remember, you know, it, the good old days, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, those those two-a-days coming out in full pads the, the first right practice here, and right? just being yeah. soaking wet and trying to find a, a different pair of, of shoes to have to wear for the afternoon practice. <laughs> um, it, it absolutely was a grind, but I also – I do have fond memories. Yeah. Um, because those times are so hard, that's really when you develop those great relationships. Like I've, if I miss, I don't miss fall camp. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yep. I do miss being in the locker room yeah. during those days because it was a grind and, and the strong survived. And that's really when you, you developed great relationships because you were going through it with a hundred other guys. I don't know if it's the same Langer, but I'll ask the, the, the two, 2013 fall camp to lead up to K-State. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any similarities of this fall camp leading up for Colorado? Grant, I know they're not the reigning Big 12 champs, and sure. NDSU was known, not like they are known now, but are there similarities, you think, from that fall camp to potentially this one? I do. Yeah, I think you, you number one, first thing that comes to my mind, you got a quarterback that's coming back for his fifth, sixth year. I can't, I can't keep track <laughs> of the years now, but we had the same thing, Brock obviously, with Brock yep. coming back for his mm -hmm. senior year. Um, and, and a lot of seniors, if you look at this roster, there's a lot of guys that have been here for three, four, yep. five years, um, which was very similar to to that class, that team in, in 2013. So, and and looking back at that team, you know, I think there was never a doubt that we were going to have not only an opportunity, but yeah. we were going to win that game. Yeah. Um, and I'd like I'd like to think that this this crew will have no different outlook. I think there'll be a lot of confidence. Obviously, we're going to have to play really well and not turn the ball over, which we didn't at Kansas State, I believe, um, which nope. is obviously huge on the road. Yep. But when you're playing an FBS team. The margin for error is so small. So, yeah, I, I do see, you know, with the amount of experience um, that it takes to win those games, I think that this team's going to certainly have a chance. How hot was it that night? Oh, my gosh. I was hot so it's for funny. me, and I wasn't doing anything. You know, I don't <laughs> – I remember, I remember it being hot, but it happens so fast with all those things. I tell people all the time that ask me that. I, do, I know it was hot. I remember it being hot, yeah. but I knew it was really hot when my dad came up to me after the game and told me that he was alternating beers and water <laughs> in the tailgate lap because typically, <laughs> if you know my happening. family at all, there was no altering beer with anything. Um, so that, that told me, man, he, he oh, had to be hydrating. Man. So it, it, it was. But what I would say to that point, was we were also fortunate that fall camp, it was as hot as it, yeah, it, it was. is this week. Yeah. I mean, you're talking I remember 90s, the lead up to it was and again, gross. you're talking yep. two-a-days. Yep. We went like, I want to say we went like 14 or 15 straight days of practice <laughs> because it was an early game. Yep. I, I do that. It was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. It wasn't fun at the time, <laughs> right, in those conditions, but it got us ready. And you had a huge play in that game, obviously, yeah. to keep that drive alive. That's got that – where does that one rank? Does it for you personally on on the most satisfying wins or most important yeah. games you played? You know, I think for me because my my opportunities were few and far between, <laughs> right? Being a being a walk on and mostly a special teams player, yep. but like most walk ons, I found I found my niche, I found my role in the team yep. and, and ran with it. But you knew that your opportunities were limited. Um, so for me, the most gratifying thing was me taking advantage of the opportunities I did have because I didn't have as yeah. many opportunities as, you know, Sam O'Jury and John Crockett. And you think back to that, that group, what a special group that was. The fact they were on the same team still. <laughs> shakes, I shake my there is some at that. talent. Oh there is some talent in that room. And then Chase Morlock yes. coming along. And so, um, yeah, for me personally, yep. absolutely the most gratifying. I, I tell people all the time, uh, we caught people way off guard, you know, in that scenario, third and 10, 11, whatever. Who would have thought it was going to the third string running back? Did on the you team? know it was coming? You know, again, things happen so fast yeah. that when the play is called, you do what you do in practice. Um, you revert back to that. Okay. You you know you you rep 
those things so many times that you don't even realize what you're doing. So I think it happens so fast, you don't have time to think about, oh, yeah. my gosh, the ball's coming to me. It's not like little giants, like, <laughs> I'm Johnny. No, you don't, you don't have time to, to think like that. Yeah. So, you know, it happens so fast. Um, you made a, probably the, a cut, though, man. You made a cut and then bam. Yeah, probably the biggest thing I remember about that play, and it's funny because I've been talking to him a lot um, recently, is uh, Billy Turner. Yep. I just remember Billy Turner just flying by and yep. just crushing someone. And I think that's what you're referring yep. to. I cut behind Billy and – and uh, the rest was history. <laughs> um, but that that was such a special group oh, because, man. like I said earlier, there was never, even going into the game, and then as we were behind a touchdown or 10 points, whatever it was, there was never any concern or lack of confidence. Yep. I think we knew yep. we were a really talented group, and ultimately we worked really hard to get to that point that – we knew we'd give ourselves a chance. Being a former walk-on, to, how much do you relate to the current guys? You tell them about your story. Like this is, I, yeah. I parlayed this into what I, I really am proud of my of my athletic career at yep. ASU. Yeah, you know, I you know, I think for me, I've I've never been the most talented at everything at anything. Um, so I've had to work for the position I'm in now. Yeah. You know, started as a GA, uh, was an assistant director, and then a director, and now overseeing team makers. So I've always taken the steps to get here i've never had anything handed to mm-hmm. me in in my life and so i think i take that that that's a part of my daily work ethic um is is nothing has ever been given to me every day is a, a fresh start and you got to go earn it you know today earn those reps earn those yeah. reputations earn people's trust it's no different than what i do now right i had to earn brent vegan's trust that he could put me in for that play yeah. today and what i do in fundraising i have to earn our donors trust that we're going to put their dollars where they want it to go, which is supporting our, our student athletes. So there's there's a lot of parallels to what I do now. It's great to see. I want to ask you about the anticipation for the opener and what team makers role in that. Matt was talking a little bit about because there's going to be a, a lot of fans. Yeah. How long early is the planning gone into this, and what do you have anticipating for fans to that go to the game in Boulder? Yeah, just like our, our fans, we've been planning for this one yeah, for, for a long time. Yeah. Obviously, the, the FBS games that we have the opportunity to play in are few and far between. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're a we're, – uh, you know, it's it's our own fault that we can't schedule almost. So, um, yeah, no, we're we're really excited. You know, should we anticipate having five, six thousand fans wow. on there, which will be, which will be awesome. We we got rid of most of our ticket allotment, and what I've learned a lot about our fans is they're resourceful. They'll find they a will way. They will find tickets. Yes, they will. Um, so I anticipate us having well above what our allotment was, um, but we're really excited. We're gonna have an event for everyone that's in Boulder on on Wednesday night. We'll be at the Rayback uh, Collective, which is a really nice spot in Boulder. So. Open to the public. Any, if you're a Bison fan and want to come, nice. come pregame okay. with Bison fans, we'll be at the Rayback Collective, and we'll have, we'll be sending more of this information out as we get closer. Um, and then Thursday, we'll also have have another event leading up to kickoff, probably a couple hours before kickoff okay. at the the hotel we're staying at. So we'll have events um, both nights down in Boulder and take advantage of uh, the great opportunity. And I think this is going to be a one, kind of a once in a lifetime thing. Um, for not only our student athletes, number one, but our our fans yep. and and by the nation, because I think the spectacle of this is oh different, gosh. right? It's just it there's is. a different feeling it is, to it. I mean, the, the, you think about the amount of celebrities that'll <laughs> more than likely be on that Colorado sideline, right? Like, how many? Again, going back to our student athletes, how many? kids can say i play on a football field yeah, and you know. i'll just use snoop dogg i don't yeah. know if snoop dogg's gonna be there he's busy with the olympics he's at the olympics now um, yeah. he's being paid those, out at all another buys the news yeah yet, right 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 <laughs> but those caliber it'll, it'll just be a really cool experience i think boulder will just be um be electric it'll be fun were you a Deion sanders fan when you were growing up watching him play you know not no of course not i was a packer <laughs> I know, fan I know. you can't cheer for the cowboys are you kidding me or the 49ers or, or the 49ers yeah. either one yeah um, but obviously, you know, <laughs> looking back, seeing highlights, the guy was an unbelievable athlete. Oh, I mean, man. just just one of a kind. And um, he's obviously changed the face of college athletics, no whether doubt. you like his style or not. Or not. It's, um, it's there. Yep. The reality of Colorado yep. football wasn't obviously nearly as, no. you know, relative as it is as it is now. So. Whether you like him or not, you know, he certainly had a positive effect for them. I want to ask you, I asked Matt this as well, year in with the Green and Gold Collective, how have things gone working with them hand-in-hand? How's that gone on the team maker's side with the collective now being here? Yeah, no, it's it's been good. You know, we meet with them monthly to, to 
make sure we're both on the same page in terms of obviously they're doing some events for people that are giving the collective. We have our own annual yeah. fund events um, throughout the year. So making sure that we're not scheduling over the top of each other. So keeping an open line of, of communication has, has been really positive. Um, and for us on the annual fund side, because it's, it's so new to people and I still don't think people have a great grasp of the impact that it has on college athletics and will have on college athletics moving forward. For us, it's a great opportunity to, to relay the message to our donors on the importance of it um, because it's really, it's becoming a part of the student athlete experience. And as our coaches are out recruiting, it, it makes an impact. Donations, are they, is what you wanted in terms of monetary are they, or is it, is it tailed off? Is it still at a good spot where you like it at right now? In, fund, you always in want fundraising, it's never where you want it. always want more. It's never where you want it. Are you at a good level? Are you, are you comfortable where things yeah. are at Yeah, you know, right I think at, at our level, um, if you're looking at the ref, just using football at the rest of yep. FCS, we're in a really good spot. Um, and our kids are, are, are involved in that. They're doing a great job in the community with volunteering and being at our other sporting events. The collective has done a great job um, implementing what they do and the time our student athletes are spending with encouraging other people to come to our events. I think you saw that yep. a lot at our basketball games. Absolutely. Um, so, no, should I tell you on the annual fund side, we want to, we, we, <laughs> we want to raise more yeah. and we want to continue to find other ways to make sure that NDSU is one of the best opportunities yeah. in the country for student athletes to come here, get a degree, and win championships. That's, that's why they're here. All right. I got to show you something here. As a Packer fan, I don't know if you saw this today, they're, they're going to unveil white jerseys and white helmets i saw i so, saw part of the packers one so yep. as a you're connected as a former bison player now run team makers can yep. we get a white bison helmet can we make because <laughs> craig bull your old football yeah. coach shot me down on the all yellow look he said okay. no dom will look like bananas out there can we do this and we got close didn't we with the did we go gold and white pants or white pants and gold uniforms yeah, once yep I want to say we were on the road or yeah, something. Yeah, Arizona. So we got, we got, Arizona yeah. did that. Yeah, green, gold, it was gold. green, white, gold on that yes. one for the Arizona game. Can so we do this? Close. This Gosh. is sharp. A white bison helmet would look fantastic. Did you run this? Did you give this to Larson no. too? No, you do it. Man. You're the money guy. <laughs> You're the money guy. Make it happen. You can yeah, find, there you there's go. some alums who would I do like this, that. right? I think, that's, I think it's a fresh look. Um, no, I, I think we could try to make that happen. I've been told that you got shot down. And kids like that stuff these days, right? Well, I'll tell you what right now. The all green is... Damn sharp. That one's yep. my favorite that you guys have. Mm-hmm. Um, I like green, white, green. That one's pretty good. You never sure. had this. All you nope. had was the traditional. You never the, got the, the golden only, helmet. No, the only thing I had was my last two years that we had the golden uniforms. Yes. That was it. Right. Yeah, that was about as far as we went off the the, um, the this, line from make this what happen. we always work. Make this happen. We'll see can what we do can it? do. That's helmet, next, next fundraising campaign. There you go. <laughs> do we need more? Yes, we need yeah. more. It's great to see you, man. Thanks yeah, for coming thanks by. For we'll me. talk to you when Appreciate we get close to the Boulder game, all right? Sounds good. Derek Lang, former Bison running back and director of team makers, joining us here on site. We'll take our final break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up, tell you what we got coming up later today up here at the indoor practice facility. Hot Mike wraps right after this. Wrapping things up here on this Thursday morning, thanks to our entire engineering crew and uh, everybody making today's show possible. These live shows are always fun and uh, not easy to set up, so we appreciate everybody making that happen. And uh, and Kyle back punching everything in studio for uh, making our show go here today. So uh, a couple quick notes before we say goodbye and let everybody know what's going on. Uh, one. NFL signing that is actually of local importance here, and it's not direct, so I'll connect it here. Tristan Wirfs, the outstanding lineman of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, signed the richest contract for an offensive lineman in NFL history this morning. I want to get the exact details here. Five years, $140 million. Now, the connection here is Wirfs played at the University of Iowa. He was coached and recruited by one Tim Polisek, now the head football coach, obviously, at North Dakota State. And an interesting story that uh, I was told is that when Polisek was out on the road recruiting this June, Wirfs was with him while they were on the phone with two offensive line recruits, that he gave the phone to Tristan Wirfs and got them to commit. That's a pretty neat deal there. Let's do some what to watch before we get out of here.
All right, there is football tonight. The Texans and the Bears to start the NFL preseason. You'll see it on WDAY. Bennell will probably be the only one watching that one. 7 o'clock tonight for the Texans and the Bears. No uh, number one draft pick, Caleb Williams, playing in that one. The USA women's basketball team will take on Belgium 2 o'clock today on USA, the second game for the American women in the round-robin part of the Olympics. And coming up here in just a few minutes, the gymnastics all around to see if Simone Biles can win the gold medal. Our thanks to our full lineup of guests here today. If you missed any of the show, we'll podcast it later today. It's also available on WDAY+. We'll see everyone back here at 1 o'clock on Bison Media Day.